heroin I believe in here has type 1 diabetes. Oh my gosh, are you okay, dude? You okay? Come here, did you cough? Excuse the dog chewing, if you can hear him chewing a bone. He's chewing a bone. <laughs> Hi everybody, it is 12.30 on this Tuesday. I woke up about an hour ago. <laughs> Last night was really rough. Um, we had some vet pet issues. So I stayed up to make my cookies, as you saw in the last one. Um, and I was like getting ready to go to bed, cleaning up my area. Katniss threw up in her sleep on my bed. My other dog who also went to the vet with us ended up throwing up earlier that night too. So we were thinking it's like the medication that they were given, which is maybe a bad reaction to their stomach, but kind of threw up in her sleep on my bed. So I had to come upstairs. This is the upstairs guest room slash my sister's room whenever she's here. So I slept in this bed last night. So yeah, last night was, I was up for a very, very long time trying to deal with all of that. So that's why I slept in pretty late. We got his little bone. This used to be a wishbone. It used to be like this big, there were things on each side, it went boom, boom, like a wishbone. And now it's just a little nub, because he chewed all of it. <laughs> you want it? Come here. He likes for me to hold it for him while he chews it. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do right now. Anyway, um, while I was exporting my video last night, I ended up finishing the Alien Nanny for Christmas. I think I might give it four stars. It was really fun and cute and I liked it. Maybe even a five. I honestly don't know. It was just really fun and awesome. I don't really find like a flaw with it. Uh, well, actually, my only flaw is the title of the book because the Christmas part doesn't pop up until 85% of the way through the book. I don't think it should have been titled The Alien for Christmas or whatever. I really liked it as like a story. The whole story by itself was amazing, wonderful. I really liked it. I really recommend it. But if you're looking forward to like a Christmas book, this isn't really a Christmas book. Um, maybe like the last 10 to 15 pages or even less than that. I think even less than that involves Christmas of some kind. But overall, this alien romance was freaking amazing. And then I have three hours left of Fi Fire and His Fury by Ruby Dixon. Okay, so this one is way more boring. Dang, it's boring. I also thought that this one was my favorite in the series. Looking back at my Goodreads, I gave it three stars. So it's not my favorite in the series. So far still, book number one is my favorite in the series. I don't know why I thought that this one was my favorite. Maybe it's because it had like the Rapunzel-esque story and I really liked Amy. It's just so boring right now. I'm so bored. They're like doing nothing. So I have to edit my um, November wrap up. That is the video that is going to be up tomorrow. That is yesterday. For you guys so i gotta get to editing that bad boy i like to have booktube on in the background while i edit videos so we're gonna do that and um cuddle with him while i do that yeah hi y'all this is my last update for the day sorry for the lack of content tomorrow which is going to be paired with today's video um is going to have a lot more content i promise you i think my mom is going to go get our Christmas tree from our storage unit because we still have stuff in a storage unit um, since we've moved. Um, hopefully I can do some of that tomorrow. But today has been a pretty boring day. I've been mainly editing videos and doing stuff on my computer and working on there. I did my stair workout. And again, I woke up really late today because last night was honestly so tiring. <laughs> Um, I'm kind of still beat from having to deal with everything from last night. But I just want to let y'all know that I absolutely love your comments on my Vlogmas videos. I kind of thought not to do Vlogmas because I was wondering who would even watch them. But I've gotten so many comments and so many messages from lovely people like you um, saying how much you love my Vlogmas videos and you're commenting on them and it's honestly so sweet. So thank you guys. Um, I honestly didn't think that anybody would watch them. So, so when this video was posted, you watched watching this right now. Yesterday I would have posted or I will post my November wrap up. So if you want to go watch my November wrap up, that will be already up for your viewing pleasure. I read 17 books and um, I am currently working on my cards for my friends. I just completed my second one for the night. 
Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna be done for the night though. I just completed gens and I completed, well, one of the gens. <laughs> I have two gens and then I have two Bree's, so one of the Bree's. Uh, those will be sent out tomorrow. I still have to address them and everything and write their um, little card. One thing that has been bothering me today um, is I've kind of like inherited my dad's um, blistering cracked knuckles. I have This has never happened to me before, but I think it's because of the new area we live in. It's colder than what I'm used to. I'm used to the humidity in Houston, and um, that is not what this area is. This area is cold, and I'm not used to the cold. Uh, so I'm having cracked and blistering knuckles, and I'm literally doing nothing to them, and they're just raw and aching, and ugh, it's really hard not to mess with them or pick at them and then lotion is literally doing nothing if anyone has tips on cracked blistering knuckles please let me know because like my knuckles aren't like red like this like they're not and they're not like this rough texture it's really weird anyway um i also want to let y'all know i completed two books today and i am almost halfway through a third one so i ended up completing the alien nanny for Christmas. I think I already told y'all about that. And then I also completed Fire and His Fury by Ruby Dixon. I think I'm gonna give it three stars. It's just, it was so boring. This one was so boring. And this is the one that almost all my friends like rate the highest out of all of them. And I don't understand why. I don't understand why. Like the beginning is entertaining and cool. I love that. The last half, really boring. This one I'm currently reading, which is Fire in His... Is it Flame or something? I don't know. This is the cover. I am incredibly sorry. I can't remember the title. But I started that one. This one is so much more entertaining than the last one. Also, this is the first book in the series that is not a reread for me. So this is the first time I'm going to be listening to this one. And I think there's one or two more after this. So I'm really enjoying this one, Dragon Shifter, again. I can't really explain the plot to you. It's like post-apocalyptic dragons. Alien dragons come into the sky and decimate almost the entire earth, except for a few camps here and there. This woman lives in one of those camps and he smells her in the camp and wants her as his mate. I also started a Kindle Unlimited ebook today, which is Roses in Winter by Penelope Daniels. This is around 100 pages and it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And from what I can gather of it, I'm only 10% of the way through chapter four. Our heroine is escaping her abusive husband and on her way to escape, she discovers this castle and our hero is the owner of that castle and i believe he just has he has he's a scarred hero he has scars all over his face he's the beast character i think so i'm going to be reading that while i am um uploading my november wrap up because that's going to take a little bit before bed and that is my last update for the day so i will chat with you tomorrow for the rest of this flip and vlog <laughs>
aren't like that in novella, I won't like the novella. So I am really enjoying this. I plan on finishing it after I film this clip. I am over halfway done with the Ruby Dixon Dragon Book. Again, I don't know the name of it. <laughs> Um, I really like this one. Oh, I was listening to it while I was doing cards last night. I have to make a bracelet again, another bracelet. Um, and I can show you this one because she doesn't watch my videos, but I am making my friend's birthday present, her late birthday present, um, because she's coming to see me in a couple of days. Um, and I haven't finished her present yet and I'm making her a bracelet and it's gonna say hi lady of the night court Y'all I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited and possibly when I open up an Etsy shop if y'all really want one I can make a bunch of these. Brie though, Brie gave me this idea though. So shout out to Brie for giving me that idea. But my friend Katie loves the Akita trilogy. Hopefully she'll like this. And you can use it also as like a, a keychain. I picture it as like putting it on a keychain. If I make one for myself, I wanna make one into a keychain. But anyway, while I'm here, I wanted to tell y'all and show you all of the books that I brought home for winter break. So this is, was, is my winter break TBR. It's very ambitious. <laughs> I've read like almost none of them <laughs> and we're almost halfway through December. <laughs> so first um, I need to continue and finish Father Mine by J.R. Ward. This isn't the whole book. I have a bookmark here. It's a novella part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood series about Zetas and Bella and Nala. I started it during the Paranormal Romance Readathon and never finished it. So I need to though. I don't know why I didn't finish it. I, when I, I think when I started this, I was in a huge slump when it came to physically reading books. I still am if I'm not gonna lie here. Um, so I need to finish that. My wonderful friend Hannah Grace, who is also coming to visit me in a couple of days, Let Me Borrow Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. I'm probably gonna read it like today or tomorrow before she comes because I want to give back to her. But this is a graphic novel that she absolutely loves and I have um, never heard of it before. I need to know what she's talking about. We've had like a fun time with quarantine when it comes to books. We've been trading books with each other so I like lent her pumpkin heads and she lent me this one and then I lent her red, white, and royal blue and I just let her keep that one because unpopular opinion, but I do not like that book, so. <laughs> and you can come for me all you want. I DNF'd it, couldn't, I could not get into it. I am not a political person literally at all and I can't, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand all the political stuff, so. Then I ended up buying A Glove by Colleen Hoover recently and I actually know nothing about this book, but Reagan from Ray Ray Reads makes me want to read this book. <laughs> This is a girl about a girl named Tate and she meets the tormented and secretive Miles Archer. They are not friends at all. The only thing Tate and Miles have in common is a mutual physical attraction that can't be denied. And they might have stumbled upon the perfect no strings attachment arrangement between the two of them. And what they've got could be surprisingly satisfying as long as Tate can stick to the two rules Miles has for her. Never ask about the past and don't expect a future. Hearts get infiltrated, promises get broken, rules get shattered, love gets ugly. So. She makes me want to read this book and know what the hickety heck she raves about. So I want to pick that one up and I've heard great things about it. And then I also got Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. Holy crap. Y'all, this book, I want to read it so badly, but I have other books to read. I've heard amazing things about this book and like, uh, this is a fandom romance book. I don't want to get too much into it because I want to go in blind, but like she dresses up like cosplaying a, a character from a show kind of like Game of Thrones and he's the actor from the show and they're actually friends online but she doesn't know that he's the actor and then he asks her out on a date and like I've heard amazing things and I can't wait to read it. <laughs> this is like one of my most like anticipated reads the whole entire year. I need to read more Olivia Dade um but like sounds so good. <laughs> then we have A Shattered Moment by Tiffany King. This is my TBR jar pick for the month of December. I have to read this very soon. This is a romance between um, a woman who was in a car crash before she got into college and a romance like a year later with the EMT who like saved her. Um, but she nece didn't necessarily wanna be saved. I don't really know anything else. I've never heard anybody talk about this book. I think I bought it off a whim at Barnes & Noble one day, um, but this will become a dedicated reading vlog. So hopefully it's not too long. The text is pretty big. It's only, Oh, don't get spoiled. I'm just in the epilogue, not reading it. 280 pages. So hopefully it doesn't take me very long, um, but I have to read this one very soon. I also have a couple books behind me, a part of like a secret TBR video that um, is coming out hopefully in the next couple days. I still have to read two books for that, but I'm not gonna tell you what they are because it's for a secret TBR, so. Um, then I have Beautiful Secret by Christina Lauren, book number 
four in the Beautiful Bastard series. Um, I have the audiobook currently on Libby being checked out. Okay, so I don't know much about this book. Um, I think that it is a romance between a woman from London. Sorry if you hear the dog slurping water. <laughs> and that she like has to go to New York City and there she meets Niall Stella, I think, which is the brother to the hero from the second book. So I think they're both from London. Very interested to read this one. I love the Beautiful Bastard series, so yeah. Then we have The Summer I Found You by Jolene Perry. I'm trying to read more books that have disability representation in it and our heroine I believe in here has type one diabetes. Oh my gosh, are you okay, dude? You okay? Come here, did you cough? Are you okay? Come here. Come here. You okay? You okay? She's okay. Yeah, it's very short. I've never read a book about a character who has <laughs> diabetes, so um, I'm very interested and want to know more about it. Then we have Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. This is a romance between Crystal and Gabriel. Whoa, here comes a parade of dogs. Come here. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Come on. You're the last one. I don't know really anything about this one. It's just a romance between, I think, two damaged people. Um, I love Mia Sheridan, and I need to read more by her, and this is actually a traveling book that I am trying to start up. Um, a bunch of my friends are doing, like, traveling books, and this was the one that I, like, wanted to do and send out. I haven't even read it yet, though. I'm supposed to annotate it and everything and send it off to another friend for them to read it and annotate it, and I just haven't done it yet, <laughs> and I feel really bad, um, but um, it's gonna happen. We're gonna do it soon. Then we have Stay Gold by Tolby McSmith. This is a young adult LGBTQI plus representation book. Our hero here, our male main character is a trans man. He goes to a new school and he just wants to fly under the radar and doesn't want anybody to notice him. And then he falls for the cheerleader or the head cheerleader at their school. So it's that dynamic. I've heard great, amazing things about this book and I wanna read it so badly. I'm waiting for my, the audiobook to come in for the library and once it does, I am definitely going to be listening to it and reading it. Then we have Find Me Their Bones and Send Me Their Souls by Sarah Wolf. These are the second and third book to Bring Me Their Hearts, which is my favorite young adult fantasy book at the moment. And um, I haven't read the next two and I don't know why I haven't, I just haven't. Um, I love how the dogs are just going up and down, up and down. <laughs> I really loved the first book and um, I can't wait to continue on with the series. I think this is the last one. I think it's only a trilogy, but like, look how beautiful these covers are, you guys. I was sent this book by Entangled Teen, by the way, and oh my gosh, literally blew my mind. I love them so very much. The dogs are now playing. You can hear them. Y'all are just like, being loud, huh? You like being loud? And so then we have the mass market paperbacks that I have brought with me. I have Trust in Me by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Um, my favorite book of last year was Wait for You by Jennifer L. Armentrout. It's a college new adult romance. I loved it so much. And so this is that same book, but it is all in the perspective of our male main character because the first book, Wait for You, is all in the, main, all in the perspective of our heroine. And so we get to see through our hero's eyes in this book. So. I really wanna know what our hero was thinking through all that. Then I have two books a part of the same series, the Rendezvous, I think, series by Joe McNally. We have Slow Dancing at Sunrise and we have Stealing Kisses in the Snow. The reason why I brought both of these is because the second book deals with Christmas. And so I wanna read both of these around Christmas time. I don't know anything about these. These are contemporary romances that I've heard amazing things about on Goodreads. Like the Goodreads for, ratings for these books are amazing. And I got this in Barnes and Noble on a whim and then when I went to, I think a half price books one time, I stumbled across the first one and it was just like fate. So I have the first two um, and then all the rest are historical romances. <laughs> okay, we have Hello Stranger by Lisa Kleypas and Chasing Cassandra by Lisa Kleypas. I think I'm missing one book in between. Is it Devil's Daughter is in between these two books possibly or is Devil's Daughter after this one? I have to look that up. Anyway, these are two books part of the Ravenels. I have read the first three and have loved the past two. Book one was okay, um, but I've heard this series just gets better and better and better. And I can't wait to read these ones. Okay, then we have um, A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. I have not read the Spindle Cove series yet. This is the first book of the Spindle Cove series. I think this is like everybody's least favorite series out of all of Tessa Dare's books, but I still wanna read it so I can read all of Tessa Dare's books. Spindle Cove is the destination of choice for certain types of well-bred young ladies. The painfully shy young wives disenchanted with matrimony and young girls too enchanted with the wrong men. It is a haven for those who live there. And then Victor Bromwell, the new Earl of Rycliffe, knows he doesn't belong here. As far as he can tell, 
there is nothing in this place but spinsters and sheep. But he has no choice. He has orders to gather a militia. It's a simple mission made complicated by the spirited, exquisite Susanna Finch, a woman who is determined to save her personal utopia from the invasion of Bram's makeshift army. Very interesting. I love her dress. Let's see the step back here. Oh, it's just an up-close version of the front. Very pretty. Then we have The Magic by Robin Lee Hatcher. Um, this one, there's a step back for that one. Um, this one, I believe, is just a pirate romance. Very excited about that one. I want to read pirate romances. Then we have Emerald Enchantment by Patricia Grosso. Vulnerable young widow of a hot-tempered Irish chieftain, Catherine Devertoe sought her children's safety in marriage to her late husband's ambitious nephew, Hugh O'Neill, who won an earldom with their union. Now Countess of Throne, Catherine concealed her feelings from her charismatic husband. Remembering the terrible fury of her first husband's love, she feared Hugh could never give her the tenderness she yearned for. Dazed by the beauty of his delicate bride, the Earl of Tyrone was incensed as she shunned the marriage bed. No sooner had he known, shown Catherine the loving kindness she craved, she was then kidnapped by a vengeful kinsman. Ooh. Uh, Hugh's daring raid rescued his lovely countess from her lust maddened captor but the secret of her nights as a hostage haunted Catherine and Hugh and there was only one way to regain her trust and rekindle her desire very interesting so she is kidnapped and he goes to save her then we have warrior's woman by Johanna Lindsay um this is I believe a sci-fi romance that Johanna Lindsay wrote and like the cover is just flipping amazing do you see that y'all this book was like a huge steal for me i got it from a ebay mystery box and just about fainted when i saw it and i can't wait to read this one i only know that it's a sci-fi related romance then i recently bought the highlander's princess bride by vanessa kelly this is actually the third i think in a series in a historical romance series so i'm not gonna really read the summary because i don't want to get spoiled the cover just drew me in and like it looks beautiful, so I had to buy it, and so I have that too. <laughs> then we have um, I Love for All Time by Sandra Davidson. The step back for this one is absolutely gorgeous. Like, are you kidding me? Look at that. So this one is about Summer, and she has visions of Colonel John Hawk, a man who lived more than two centuries ago. Then Summer has suddenly found herself swept, swept back in time to which burning Massachusetts and the darkened bedroom of a magnificent estate. She turned and she walked straight into John Hawk's embrace. Trapped in another era, a prisoner of his endless desires, Summer knew his fevered kisses were her destiny, his ardent caresses her fate. Even if she had to change the course of history, she would find a way to lie in his arms for always. The instant she stumbled into his waiting arms, John Hawk knew that at last he found the, be the bewitching silken skinned beauty who'd consumed his dreams for many a night. A wanton enchantress, she's tempted him with his sensuous smile, enticed him with the promise of endless nights of rapture. Neither a world on the brink of war, nor even history itself would ever come between him and the woman who had inflamed his passions and stolen his heart. She would be his, he vowed, until the end of time. This one just sounds freaking amazing. I wanna read this one, probably maybe the most out of all of them. Oh no, I have one more I wanna read the most. And I'll talk to that about that in a little bit. But this one is really great or sounds really great. I haven't read it yet. But anyway, then we have uh, The Gentle Beast by Colleen Shannon. And this one is really pretty. And then I love the step back because it's like cut out right here. And then you have this. Um, all I know about this is that it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And I love Beauty and the Beast retelling. So very excited for this one. And then we have another beautiful step back. We have um, Married in Haste by Kathy Maxwell. Look at that step back. Holy crap, y'all. Like, that is absolutely gorgeous. This is my first ever step back Saturday book. Beautiful, beautiful book. Bren Owen, the Earl of Merton, has come to London to choose a bride. The broad-shouldered war hero has his pick of the season's debutantes, but once he boldly gazes upon Tess Hamlin, he knew he couldn't rest until he made London's reigning beauty his own. But behind Tess's lighthearted facade was desperation. She had no choice but to marry quickly before news of her family's ruin became common gossip. So she accepted Bren's sudden proposal without letting him know the truth. He offered her days and nights of unforgettable passion, but how could she marry him without feeling she just portrayed the one man she could ever love? That sounds really good. 
I love this step bag so much, so I really want to read this. And lastly, the um, historical romance I probably want to read the most out of all of them is Never Seduce a Scot by Maya Banks. Now, this one is about Eveline, Eveline, and she is fiercely loved and protected by her powerful clan, but outsiders considered her touched. Beautiful Fay, with a level intent gaze, she doesn't speak. No one, not even her family, knows that she cannot hear. Content with her life in seclusion, Eveline has taught herself to read lips and allows the outside world to view her as daft. But when an arranged marriage into a rival clan makes Graham Montgomery her husband, Eveline accepts her duty, unprepared for the lights to come. Graham is a rugged warrior with a voice so deep and powerful that his new bride can hear it, and hands and kisses so tender and skilled that he stirs her deepest passions. Graham is intrigued by the mysterious Eveline whose silent lips are ripe with temptation and whose bright, intelligent eyes concede to his soul. As intimacy deepens, he learns her secret. But when clan rivalries and dark deeds threaten the wife he has only begun to cherish, the Scottish warrior will move heaven and earth to save the woman who has awakened his heart to the beautiful song of a rare and magical love. That sounds so good. So we have a historical romance with disability representation. Our heroine is deaf and I can't wait to read this. I want to read this literally today, but I have another historical I have to read. You know what that historical is, so I need to read that one like today. But those are all the books that I brought <laughs> to my parents' house for winter break, and there are more up here, but like some are on a secret TBR, some you're not supposed to know about, some I've already read, so those are all of these. So yeah. <laughs> I want to get to doing the many things that I do today, so I will chat with y'all later. Hi y'all, this is the end of the reading vlog. Um, I really want to get to editing this and uploading it. Um, it's not the end of the night yet. Um, I'm still going to do a bunch before bed, but I want to get this edited and uploaded. So here we are. Um, I have finished two books today. Woohoo! I finished Roses in Winter by Penelope Daniels. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I'm giving it four stars. This was really fun. It's a Beauty and the Beast novella, very reminiscent of the classic Beauty and the Beast movie. I really liked it. There were quite a few um, unique factors in this retelling that I really liked. Her husband, who was like abusive to her and everything, the reason why he's doing these things is because he thinks that God is making him. And then the priest of their town like helps him do all this because he thinks that like, his wife is living in a sinful way and it's just I didn't like the aspect of God being put into that because there's just some negative stereotypes when it comes to Christians and like I don't really appreciate reading about those. If that aspect wasn't in there, I would have absolutely adored this and given it five stars. I really liked it and I'm giving it four stars. But the whole thing about them using God as a reason to abuse women is uh, left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, so I am only giving giving it four stars. But that's obviously probably not what the author is trying to like convey or anything. I just, I didn't enjoy reading about that, you know? It's my personal preference, so. And then I ended up finishing Fire in His Spirit. I think I finally figured out the title for this one. I don't know if I already told y'all I read this or not, or like completed it. I don't know. Um, my brain is kind of mush right now. <laughs> but um, I'm giving this four stars. I really enjoyed this one. This one was really fun. This one was more of a slow burn out of all of them. Like they don't mind link for a very long time. And if you know what happens to make them mind link, you know. I'm so looking forward to the next two books in the series because the next one is about our main character woman from this book's friend. Then the one after that is about our first female dragon, which is the one I've been waiting for. And the cover for that one is absolutely stunning. Look at this. Like this one is absolutely stunning. I can't take my eyes off of it. Like it is beautiful. While my video is exporting and editing and all that stuff, I'm going to be finishing my best friend's birthday present that I'm working on. Here is some of it. Hopefully you can see that or read it. It says, hi, lady of the, and it's going to keep saying the night court. So um, these are the bracelets that I was talking about that I make. You can use them as a bracelet, as an anklet, as a bookmark. I would love to use them as a keychain um, or literally anything. Anybody have any ideas of what else you could use these for? Um, hopefully I have enough string. <laughs> I've never made one this long before. Like how I've made one like this long. But for what I have planned, <laughs> I haven't made one that long before. <laughs> when it comes to what I did today, I mainly finished those two books. I worked on this bracelet. While I was working on this bracelet, I was listening and finishing that audiobook. And I was watching Jen from the Book Refuge today. I love Jen. I adore her. She is almost at 5,000. She's literally at 4,990-something subscribers. And so 
you need to go follow her. I'm linking her down below. She is amazing. I like set aside kind of like a day to binge all of her videos because they're so long that sometimes I don't have like the time set aside to watch her videos. So what I do is I dedicate kind of like a Jen day. <laughs> I just watch all of Jen's videos. So today was that day. I watched like nine of them. But I adore her. I love her. Please go check her out if you haven't yet. If you haven't heard about Jen, if you love romance, go watch Jen. I'm going to get to finishing this. Whew. Picking out an audiobook, I think I might just knock out those two Ruby Dixon books just so I can say I finished the series. Please let me know down below if you've read any of the books that I talked about today. Please let me know. I'd love to know. Um, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.